I did my duty as a lifelong paladin and updated the original steeds. Some part of me hopes that, one day, Blizzard might do the same. But the bigger part of me tells me that they'll just say something like, You already have the Legion class mounts. Which is basically telling us we have food at home. So as a lower mid-tier 3D artist, it came to me to bring justice to these two PlayStation 1 assets. For my Mechanic Striders, I made the models from scratch. For these big lads, I went down a different route, exporting the original models to use as a base and simply updating them. This has the advantage of saving me time getting the basic shape to be there, saving me trouble of messing around with reference images. However, WoW is an old game, running an old tech. Working with technical stuff like the rigs carries some challenge with it, and let it be a fun little fact that technical stuff is where I am my purest form of garbage. When having a look at the modeling WoW model viewer, I noticed two things. The textures of the Blood Elf versions are named Warhorse Evil and Warhorse Evil Epic, which tells you something about where we stand as a culture. The other thing I noticed is that there are two versions of the Argent Warhorse texture. They initially created it and somehow managed to make the actual logo of the Argent Crusade upside down. They then made a copy of the texture, literally just named Thorny PvP Warhorse Copy, in which they fixed the upside down logo, after which they proceeded to put the wrong one into the game. These are the same people who made Alduar. After turning the low poly 2004 version into a medium poly 2022 version, a UV mapped the thing. I do not have many fun things to say about this, because it is not a fun process. Not unlike weight painting it, which I'm doing here, which is basically deciding how much each part of the model is affected by each bone in the rig. So I was close to finishing manually rigging the reins, torturing my inner child out of existence, a rare event took place. One of my neurons fired, and I discovered the gradient tool after spending a non-trivial amount of time failing at a task that the gradient tool would accomplish within single digit seconds. From this point on, this discovery continued to absolutely transform my life for the better, akin to the discovery of opening a banana at the bottom. To start off the texturing process, I decided to first make my horse look like a horse. I want my remake to look consistent with the game, and I want to upload this video before November next year, so I decided to use the textures of the updated in-game horses to go along with this model. Because while mount textures are 512 by 512 pixels, I used a combination of AI upscaling and Photoshop magic to create a high-res version of it, and used more Photoshop magic to make it fit my UV maps. The level of challenge of this model was on a completely different scale to my Mechanic Strider remake, and texturing it honestly intimidated the fuck out of me. I approached the process a bit more methodically, beginning with basic outlines of the textures. The model has four materials. Metal, leather, cloth and horse material. The cloth drapes was a very, very difficult thing for me. Painting different things requires separate practice when it comes to cloth, especially wrinkly cloth, I have none. So this project was a shot in the dark to say the least. I spent hours upon hours frustrated and annoyed failing at this, redoing it over and over with a growing concern that I just wasn't ready for it and I would need to scrap this video after many hours spent. Eventually, I got it to a place I thought was okay-ish and tapped out. After which I spent a couple of days obsessively staring at it on my phone as it ate away at my soul. It simply didn't look right, too leathery, it didn't feel like the original, the style was off, and rather than doing the smart thing and moving on for the time being, I hopped back on my computer the first chance I got and obsessively continued redoing the cloth until I was starting to feel some resemblance of happiness in my belly. In a stroke of good fortune, it paid off. Having regained my morale, I got the leather parts out of the way. Drawing all the straps and belts and whatnot, somewhat figuring it out as I go, whilst keeping some reference at hand in case I needed it. Got that done, moved on to the metal, which was also a reasonably smooth process. I just reapplied a lot of what I learned from my previous video, and got to a result that I'm happy with. For the saddle, I got to apply what I learned from my struggles with the drapes, and seeing this be successful was a great feeling. After many hours and a wide spectrum of brain chemicals, I was finally finished. So now it is my honor to present the mount that made me dislike existing inside my own brain. Get ready for the new and updated Warhorse. But honestly, who gives a fuck? We still have another mount to make, one that does have shiny eyeballs, golden plates and a bunch of horns. Summon Charger. The Charger always looked really unique to me, but upon studying the model, it quickly became clear to me how much it is just a modified warhorse. It has a ton of its own parts, but when you look at them, you can tell that the horns are just reusing the texture of the neck plates. The additional armor reuses parts of the original texture as well, the original still even being there underneath. The reins are just a squished version of the leather belt that goes around the body, and the face drapes are just the body drapes. 
but small. The only unique texture it has is the feet, which could be retextured because nothing else shares their texture space. Beyond that, it's really just a recolor. To me, this highlights one of the beautiful things about Classic WoW. Tech was not what it is now and Blizzard's resources weren't either. Many people often say that the purest form of creativity comes from the absence of boundaries. I disagree with that. Personally, I think the pinnacle of creativity is found in creating something cool within the limitations of a designer's given circumstances. Creating something special with limited resources is exactly what makes a developer great. And we all know from the industry that money doesn't magically make up for this talent. Or AAA games wouldn't usually suck a fat anus. Just a little thought. Having learned my lessons from my Mechanus Riders remake, I had actually left enough space in the original UV map for the new parts of the epic version. So that was happy stuff. I also weight painted the new parts. That was not happy stuff. I know I complain too much, but if you complain about that, you'll be a hypocrite. To texture the model, I applied some more lessons learned from my previous project and re-imported all the layers of the Warhorse's 2D images rather than 3D brushstrokes. I changed the colors to match the chargers and reapplied the same process on the new components, starting again with outlines. I did some basic soft shading, adding in some contrast, trying to make the metal look nice and shiny. The thing that's fun about painting metal is that you can go quite far with the lights and darks, giving you a great tool to give your piece a certain character. I just love this mount so damn much. I started playing WoW when I was 8 years old and I remember seeing it for the first time. I wanted it badly. However, I still lacked the fluid intelligence to figure out how to get it. It didn't help that I didn't speak much English yet. I wanted my remake to look like it's actually been used. So I experimented with methods of adding some wear and tear to the metal, focusing on places that would most likely be hitting stuff when the charger, you know, charged. I textured the neck spikes, trying to give them a nice shiny pointy look and give you the impression that it might pierce anyone who dares try out whether it would pierce them. After that, they got to work on the face drapes and spent some time on some general bits and bobs until I was of the opinion that it was good enough. Seeing as how much I love this mount, I went and made sure that I put the hours into this. But before I show you how it all turned out, I just want to take a second to thank everyone who subscribed to me after my last video. I had 90 subscribers when it went up and I was hoping it would get me to the 100 sub milestone. I'm currently about to reach 450. As someone who hopes to build towards a future on YouTube one day, I'm beyond happy to see that people appreciate my content. When I started my channel, I hoped I would get to 1000 subs in 2022. I'd long given up on that, but after everyone who subscribed to me in the past couple weeks, it's potentially realistic again. So a big big thank you to all of you. And as always, subscribe if you haven't like the video and leave a comment for the algorithm gods. And with all that said, I'm proud to unveil the iconic steed of the paladin, the freshly updated Charger.